The Low Birds, that's our word, brought to you by Patreon. Don't worry, you're already banned. And I'm here with Steve Miller Miller. And uh, how you doing, man? I'm banned. How are you? <laughs> you're banned. <laughs> So yeah, so let's let's get to some announcements. There's there's been there's gonna be a, a big change here on the podcast. We haven't done a podcast in uh, it's been about almost this is a bit two months. I think yeah, it's been two months. Uh, you did like a re-release. That's that's keeping your feet alive. That yeah. that's that's a technical non fade. Yeah, and that's gonna be actually kind of the last in the series, unless something major happens to somebody else. Uh, and we'll get into that in just a bit. Actually, let's get into that now. Uh, we'll get into the Patreon stuff because I think that's a deeper topic that we can get really get into. Um, yeah, so um, I've been I've been kind of noticing the landscape lately. So when when we started this podcast, it, it seemed like there was big libertarians, and if you ever said like, "Hey, this big libertarian did something terrible to somebody," or "This big libertarian is a con artist," or "This libertarian does awful terrible things or whatever uh you would get a maelstrom a maelstrom of people going hey uh how dare you criticize our 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 benevolent leader how dare you um don't knock it off uh you you must not be a real ancap etc 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 now the ties have definitely changed i don't know if you heard about what's going on with kokesh we did an episode about that a while ago Uh, i re-released that episode it's the previous i watched a couple of the larkin rose videos while i was on the road from ohio to to back to delaware so i'm I'm somewhat briefed on on the situation yeah Yeah. it's pretty crazy i like downfalls you know (laughs) uh like like i'm not really like following much political stuff anymore but like yeah if someone's having like a mental breakdown or like there's footage of them like committing some sort of felony and they're probably gonna like be taken down by like a sort full cops like yeah i'm gonna be interested yeah so, 10 times out of 10, <laughs> especially if I don't like the person, you know, if it's someone who's like downfall, I've been waiting for, uh, like, you know, people wandering the desert waiting for a savior. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I wait for downfalls. I like candles hoping that, like Austin Peterson, like it's caught on to catch a predator or something like that. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's hot. But uh, anyways, um, so that that has been happening, and there's been a huge backlash regarding Kokesh, and that particular podcast had beginning like a revival, and I've noticed that it's beginning a lot of hits lately. People are starting to check it out because a lot of people who were big fans of Kokesh going after what what he tried to do to um, him and his campaign manager tried to do to allegedly to Graham Smith, who I had just had on the show the week prior to this whole thing blowing up, which if I had waited a week, that would have been a much more interesting uh, interview. Not to say that that interview wasn't already interesting. Oh, what a hipster, what a hipster podcaster you are. Know, oh, you were, you were, you were into Graham Smith before it was worth a bunch of <laughs> downloads. So I like his early stuff when he was on my show. <laughs> yeah. Back when he used to play ska. Um, <laughs> but I, I, uh, I had yeah I had him on and, and then that whole thing happened and when I when I started when this first started coming out there was a lot of pushback I was getting pushback for saying that like Kokesh was doing awful things and then the tide just all of a sudden churned with with Lark and Rose and I think a lot of libertarians have been starting to look around after that and start to be like all right who else have we been gone by and have been calling out other people as well um, and if, I don't know if you've seen Kokesh's uh, videos, his comment section. It's been a beautiful shit show. Uh, it's uh, oh, ninety. I know what most, I'm doing the rest of the night. Yeah, yeah, most of the comment section is like, like he, he called out Jeff Berwick for being a fraud, and like the top rated comment on there is actually someone who I met at Jackfest, who's a really cool guy. I forget his name. It's like Mike. P- I'm sorry if I forgot your name. I know he listens to the show. <laughs> sorry, I forgot your name. I'm terrible with names anyway. Don't worry. I mean, I'll watch a movie and not know the fucking main character's name deal with it um but anyways yeah like the top comment is him saying pot meat kettle <laughs> so it's the tides have definitely changed and that was kind of what i wanted to do from the very beginning was to get like libertarians to stop stop the great man worship stop the uh you know following the buddha along the road and, and to kill him not not meta not literally kill kill people um your opinion may vary Steve, <laughs> but, but to metaphorically kill the boot on the road. No, I'm not in favor of actually murdering anybody either. Yeah. I think, uh, 
nah. I because that, that's the thing is that that would end the lol cow nature of them. Yeah. Like you know if 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 Adam Kokesh drives the Freedom Van off of a cliff because he's so bad that he didn't get his contractually obligated back rub that day, that ends the future lols. Like that ends the stream <laughs> of memes. Like there's no more after that, which you know might might give us all access to what you know ten minutes of free time every two months or something, yeah. but. So, yeah, I'm definitely not for physical killing, but the metaphorical killing. Just laugh at the lol cows and move on. And it seems as though. Yeah, and the other thing is these people never learn. So as long as they're alive, they're going to they're going to be one making dumb fuck decisions and two uh, shouting it out to the entire world Mm -hmm. uh, because they they can't quit like crying about how great they are. This is it's egomania. That's like the core of all this and these these folks just they just never shut up about all their their shit yeah so i've been kind of thinking after 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 another thing happened with another libertarian and a lot of people had been calling that person out as well this is probably a smaller smaller guy and it's not even worth mentioning and there's a few other things that have been happening as well i started noticing like the trend with libertarians like starting to question the like big names in the movement uh start to call them out Everywhere from Kokesh to Molyneux uh, to Jeff Berwick, and I, I think like I can I think I can stand on top of the uh, USS Liberty. It was with my mission accomplished banner and uh, and just you know just stop hitting it so hard in the paint against a lot of these libertarians. If something bad does happen, you know if if Adam Kokesh goes on a a you know, murderous ramp killing spree and starts going over to Japan and start trying to kill everybody he can, hoping that he gets Graham here Graham Smith in the process, I'm going to call that shit out do another episode but until then it's like every, everybody's kind of aware now you know i i don't need to keep harping on the on the shit anymore so i'm gonna try to keep everything a little bit more lively and fun i think i think i'm more interested in making fun of a lot of bad libertarian ideas rather than you know bad libertarian people is, is that do you think that's a, a better way to go because I, I don't think i've ran any of this past you yet so i <laughs> i will because it's all oh now you want to, now the internet wants to come out hold on let's try sorry that again. Go ahead. Uh, okay <laughs> I, I like it i like it because there's more potential to trigger mm-hmm. active libertarians because if you say like hey some guy whose videos you watch actually sucks that he actually sold fake silver to people and blah 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 blah, blah uh they're gonna be like okay well that well fuck that guy like that's kind of easy yeah. but if you're like hey you know that thing that you say to people all the time that's really annoying and that makes no logical sense and like uh doesn't think past one layer of consequence well it's actually really fucking idiotic and you should shut the fuck up <laughs> like that's a, that's a lot harder to be like than, than like okay i'll unsubscribe yeah 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 I- yeah, there's there's a lot of. I mean, I'm a libertarian. I'm sure you're still a libertarian. Is that fair to say? Do I need to uh, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a I'm a suburban gay Republican dad. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, like like uh, uh, libertarianism is a great thing. But there's a lot of kind of memes that go around libertarianism. I think that need to be talked about. It's like. No, Bitcoin is not untrackable. You can f- see everything that you've ever done on Bitcoin. And if I Google some of those addresses, I could probably connect them to other people. You know, um, some what was some of the other things that I've been hearing lately. Um, oh, things like, you know, capitalism, you know, is just it's just only my version of capitalism is actually capitalism. Everything else is not capitalism. It's like, no, it's all capitalism, too. It's just not good capitalism. And I have a cat. I a new kitty. The addiction. Yeah, I got a new kitty, and she's she's uh she's trying to gain some attention right now because she because I locked myself in the closet, uh, I guess metaphorically and physically. Metaphor. <laughs> and she's not she's not particularly happy that she's not a uh, part of the fun. So, yeah, she's uh, meowing word. and clawing at the door. Anyways, um, <laughs> my new cat, she's so cute. Did I ever tell you about the cute thing my yeah, cat did, yeah. <laughs> Steve? Uh. uh. Uh oh, you're cutting out again. You know what? It's weird. That, I had just- that was that was yesterday's that was yesterday's outrage. Today I heard another two woke comedians podcast that that I was I got to be enraged about something else. Okay. So so you're over thanks that. It, thanks it. Yeah, I'm over people telling me about their pets. That I'd I'd rather listen to that than than two comedians talking about how difficult it is to talk about their dick while being woke. Uh, <laughs> 
No. That was not the point of my story. My point of the story is like, if you probably didn't hear it because you're listening to a different audio, but my cat is, you can hear like things moving in the background and a cat meowing. That's what's happening. So that's I'm just explaining the audio situation. Yeah. But anyways, it's all good. Um, so what, what have you been knowing about what, what, what do you know about what's going on with Patreon? I think that's a more interesting thing that's happening right now. <laughs> so I, I know Sargon got kicked off and the, that a bunch of people were all angry and uh i guess a bunch of more like right word people are leaving patreon mm. but yeah i'm still paying porcelain and uh the wisconsin center for a course in miracles and like three other places uh to the tune of eight bucks every month yeah. uh and if joe matteris ever goes back on i'll start paying joe etc <laughs> you actually paid him no, Karen paid him. I never paid him. Oh, okay. oh, you're just share you're just sharing the content, I guess. Yeah, but Karen Karen likes being like low key fin domed by uh <laughs> by Joe, but no big deal. Okay. But you're getting off? Yeah, I'm leaving. You're leaving. Patreon. Yeah. Are you going to Hatreon? No, Hatreon is is gone. Uh oh. the other one that everybody was gonna go to immediately afterwards, I guess pressure was applied somehow and um PayPal the back, you know, the, the payment back end for it for the site had been, had been pulled out before anybody could even release one con- piece of content on the thing. Ooh. So, I mean, I, I uploaded one thing and I didn't have any subscribers on it just yet because everybody was like, yeah, I'm still on Patreon. And then PayPal pulled it. And after PayPal pulled it, everybody was like, okay, what the hell is happening here? So the the kind of too long didn't didn't read version is. There's a uh, Twitter person by the name of Michelle Caitlin who gets a lot of attention. Uh, she's kind of, you know, um, she's like a European conservative. And she had, uh, you know, she has like alt-right sympathies. I wouldn't say she's an alt-right or at all. Had a, a live stream with Sargon a year and a half ago. It has to be. It was a long time ago. And at, uh, during. In internet time, that's a decade. Yeah, yeah. a decade ago. And in the chat room, uh, a lot of alt writers started pouring in because the alt right hates Sargon, um, because one Sargon has rightfully gone after them, and also rightly, uh, the alt right has, has has claims that he's a moron, which both are true. Like he has made good responses to the alt right, and he is a moron. But um, they started going after him in the chat room. And they were kind of act, acting a fool. And when, while they were acting the fool, he was like, you're like, what are you doing? Like, you guys are acting like a bunch of white niggers right now. Like, everything that you say about black people, you're acting like right now. Like, you're, you guys are a bunch of hypocrites. And that was kind of the gist of what he was saying. Was it the right thing to say? No. Um, but that was the reason that Patreon had banned them. Now, I would believe it. I would believe it. If, if not at the same time, they also banned Milo Yiannopoulos, James Alsop, and uh, and the um, the video platform... BitChute, which is kind of like YouTube, but it, the back end is um, using BitTorrent, which is kind of an interesting concept. It's like, no, 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 this is definitely politically motivated. This is, you were just using that particular instance as an excuse to ban him from the platform. And, you know, at first I was kind of like, yeah, whatever. And then I started noticing that a lot of the content creators that I liked took a dip of anywhere from, you know, 10 to 50 percent of their patreon money because a lot of people just said that's it i've had enough of of this patreon has gone after people politically before and everybody's like this is an unstable platform we need to go somewhere else they went to subscribe star subscribe star got their thing pulled and it's like hmm, what a coincidence right um so everybody's trying to figure out what to do next i am building my own platform uh i I think that's the better way of doing it at first it's just going to be like an honor system because I do like Patreon only co- podcasts. I've been haven't been really good about it for the last month, especially because of this whole thing and you know the holidays. Have you had fibromyalgia like Steven Crowder? <laughs> Is that what I have not been following him at all? I could care less about him now. <laughs> well, he's he's one that I think is is what I would call downfall pregnant. Like I, I feel that you're going to see Owen Benjamin first. He'll get divorced. He'll probably be living on the street, like oh, no. at, at at some point, and then uh, you'll get a really nice Crowder downfall. It looks like Crowder's getting kicked off of CRTV, and he's getting kicked off. Who else just got kicked off? Um, because Ben, uh, not Ben, um, 
Glenn uh, Glenn Beck Glenn bought Beck. CRTV and then immediately and Michelle fired. Malkin left. Michelle Le- Malkin left because he took it over and then immediately fired Gavin McInnes. That was his first action as as the as the owner. So Gavin McInnes, say what you want. I so. think he's, he's a funny comedian. I, I don't necessarily agree with his politics. That's certainly an opinion. <laughs> I thought his I thought his movie was funny. The movie where he was like raising some kid or something like that. I thought that was hilarious. His uh, older YouTube videos before he got political that those stuff those were funny. Um, but after he got political, I'm just like Jan. Um, I think you're trying to talk, but it's cutting out. Again, you know oh. it's weird. I was I was in a server earlier on this very computer and this very setup doing this very thing. And I had no inter- connection interruptions whatsoever. I do a podcast. I don't know what's happening. So try that again. Uh, it's the CIA coming in. Oh, yeah. It, do, yeah. No, it's ASO. <laughs> well, yeah. Check check your uh, when IP conf- your, uh, your IP config. If you have any DNS servers in there, that's definitely the CIA connecting to your computer because that's how internet. That's how mafia works. Right. <laughs> Hey, let's. Okay, let me let me just try reconnecting real quick. Maybe that'll help. There we go. There we go. Yeah. All right, word. Yeah. So what was that? (laughs) You're gonna tell me how mafia works? No. If it says DNS, that stands for doing nasty surveillance. Oh, checkmate. I didn't even think of that. Holy shit. Now now you know. I need to concede. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah um, i'm moving off patreon and um uh, so what i'm doing uh is it's not quite set up yet but you can go over there and look at it look at what i'm building so far it's patrons not patreons patrons.jimjesus.com and it's basically just going to be like an, an honor system so anybody can listen um, but i just ask like hey give me a dollar a month we're cool i'm not asking for 50 cents a show and i'm not going to guilt trip you for doing it but the only thing I'm going to do is like every month it's like, hey, it's a new month. Did you re up? You better do it now. I think anyway, that's a tactical on. error. I think you should go full like circa 2015 Cantwell and make everything just this uh, absolutely uh, drastic appeal for funds. Talking about how you're going to die. I'm in desperate need for money. <laughs> I'm in desperate need of cash. That was literally uh, what he used to say on every one of his things. At the, at the end of every blog post, I am in desperate need of money <laughs> in italics. It was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. And people couldn't figure out why you were making fun of him. Like, you were talking about how the environments changed. And, like, back then, people couldn't get why, like, you would find it funny when someone's like, oh, oh my God, I'm (laughs) sleeping on a basement floor. (laughs) By the way, capitalism's the best. (laughs) Let let me tell you how to run your entire economic system. (laughs) I'm still living at home. I can't drive a car. But, hey. I, I know I'm, I'm going to tell you how Bitcoin's going to save the world, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think that's about the limit of how I want to kind of like interact with, with making fun of libertarians. It's just it, you got to be in the know, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, so yeah, um, I'm just going to just put put them up and let people join and listen to at their leisure if they're having financial issues, which could be an issue i'm sure there's a recession coming we're past due for one uh um, oh, sure you know like hey go ahead and listen for free you know and then when things are getting better you know give me a dollar a month you know i think that's a fair way of doing things and it's unfortunate that's nice because the one thing that i am going to miss about patreon is there's a sovereign citizen tech journalist who is awful just awful but occasionally his patreon stuff is pretty good it's worth a dollar a month that's going to suck not having any more um even though normally he is terrible in every single way. I think you know what I'm talking about. I forget his name. Some, yeah. Something sovereign citizen or something like that. Um, he's probably a free traveler. Yeah. Uh, he's a free traveler who watches, who, who loves the third Matrix movie. Um, his opinion is, uh, it's Paul W.S. Anderson is his favorite director. It's just unforgivable. But occasionally he talks about technology. and Paul Water funny. Sports Anderson. <laughs> It's a vintage baseball name, if ever I heard one. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm I'm leaving Patreon. 
that's, that's and it's gonna suck because uploading uploading to this this thing is uh, not particularly easy. But then again, uploading to Patreon. Can we just talk about how just Patreon as a platform is just awful? Their website it's sucks. terrible. Their app yeah. sucks. Spe- uh, all, all on mobile, it's even worse. Like I'll, I'll yeah, I deleted to- the app. Yeah, I no, tried. No use. I'll try to comment on something on the on the website on my mobile phone. And then after I get about three lines down, if I make it more than three lines, then it starts like moving my cursor around randomly. So like I'm interjecting words within words and it's like exhibit, you know, hey, yo, dog, I heard you like words. We put words in your words while you're wording. And it's like, fuck, I can't I can't even make a point on this thing. I'm just not even going to comment on certain things. And there's certain things that I want to leave comments on. I just don't because it's like, ah, I have to do it on the fucking mobile phone. I will just wait till I get home. And by the time I get home, I just don't care anymore. Platform sucks yep. anyway. <sighs> and it only Yeah, I had trouble. That's it. Hmm? Oh, geez. Tried, like, listening to content on it. And yeah, the only thing I've ever seen on Pound Media app. I don't get this. Everything was just fine. I, I swear. It's definitely the CIA after me. They don't want me to do a podcast talking about how libertarians are bad. It's obvious. There's no other way. It's fucking... My room is glowing in the dark with CIA agents. Deep state. <laughs> Maybe that'll help a little bit. You know, I think every once in a while, I'm just going to disconnect and then reconnect. And then hopefully that'll work. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. You you beat him to the punch of cutting you out. That's yeah. clever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's deft. I'll just end the show. Checkmate. Wait a minute. Damn it. No. <laughs> so wh- wh- why why did you want to watch this? Tr- I guess Trump shut down the government and he did a... Re- it wasn't State of the Union. I thought it was going to be a State of the Union, but apparently it wasn't. No, it was just like an address from the yeah. Oval Office, but there were betting lines up on it, and I had money on whether he would say the word Mexico before he said the word Mexican, and that bet cashed. Nice. Yeah, it was an even money bet, so that was good. And I thought about taking the over-under on the word wall, uh, possibly taking the under, and I understand that cashed. Uh, but I wound up not taking that one. But he only said the word wall like about four or five times, and the line was seven and a half. So, yeah. Maybe we should he said he, talk about your sports picks for this for this uh, for this week. He mixed he mixed <laughs> it up he, he mixed it up with a couple fences. That was the thing. So I think the line for over fences was like two and a half, and I think I think I think he said fence like maybe four or five times as well. So. Yeah. Wall, fence, and then fake news. I don't think he said that was that was one of the things. Yeah, they have lines up for everything. It's a it's a great time to be alive and a compulsive gambler, in in my opinion, as a Delaware resident anyway. Yeah, well, when you have a meme president, you can make bets on things and it, it should work out well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, meme president. <laughs> but we, yeah, we're, I guess we're having a government shutdown. I guess the, sh- the government already is shut down. I guess we're in Afghanistan yeah. now. Is that is that we are it. We are in Ancapistan. The eternal flame went out in Philadelphia at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Uh, along the ghost tour route, there is an eternal flame, but it's only got like 72 hours of fuel in the tank underneath. And the people who fill that f- fuel tank are non-essential government employees. <laughs> and it's now more like the temporal flame. But, yep. Is it really so going to go out, or are they really going to be like, all right, we'll just have some It's time. already out. Oh, it is? Yeah. It, it went out, like, the third day. It's not It's not the Hanukkah. Like, it's not the Tomb of the Unknown, like, Hanukkah soldier. It's it, it's it's three days, and then you're out. It's not going to last for eight additional days, <laughs> just because it happened to, like, fall close to Hanukkah when the government shut down. That's not how things work. Well, I thought they were in control. They, they what you think like you, you think Bohemian Grove is ten feet under the tomb of the unknown soldier in Washington Square in Philadelphia? What? I think, that's, I think that's how Al All right. got in. The 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 oils out start burning human babies. <laughs> that, that is not, that's not that, I thought that was the fuel. They're burning kids. I thought it was burning white kids because So since we're talking about burning, the good no, old days burning gamers, because gamers are the most oppressed minority. <sighs> People with high IQ are the most uh, most oppressed minority, as Molyneux. <laughs> By the way, have you seen those new memes about like I- high IQ, blessing or curse? 
and all the memes that have come out of it. The, my favorite one was when you when you fix your mom's computer and now she expects you to fix it every time Elsa breaks down. <laughs> High IQ. Yeah. Curse her blessing. <laughs> it's true. Uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, since we're talking about the good old days and uh, dead babies, I should we we should make mention that there was a wonderful video in 2016 that came out of Tony Styles opening for Austin Peterson when Austin Peterson was trying to con this group of libertarian boomers somewhere in Nebraska, and. Tony's telling this story about how he's overseas saving all these people in human trafficking missions, and he saw people burning babies on a pile and didn't do anything about it. He's just standing there like, oh. and it's still on YouTube. If I think if you, I think if you go if you search like Austin Peterson, Tony Styles, S T I L E S, you can see it. It's only got like 180 views or so, and. Uh, he, he like does all the tells that like people do when they're lying, and like the stories are internally contradictory. And <laughs> covering yeah, the face, it, it, it was it was it was pretty crazy. Not that shit eating grin. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, in it, it is. Grin so, it is some like like you better because that is some libertarian cringe. You got to like inject directly into your veins. Like the the amount of like scammery, like it, it it has it has all the things like the independently false the independent being independently falsifiable, uh, and then also the like clear scam element, and then nobody does anything because it's like our guys. So well, you know, might as well just let them whoa, scam whoa, for a whoa, while. Whoa, 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 was that was? Hold on, I think I just caught you using a a Nazi uh, dog whistle. Our guys, hmm. Our guys, yeah. He's one of our guys. Hmm? That was a Mark Marin dog whistle. Is that your guy? (laughs) Sorry, go ahead. (laughs) Dr. Demento, is he your guy? Yeah. (laughs) Dr. Demento is one of our guys. (laughs) (laughs) We take Dr. Demento, you can have James Fields. And that... And that joke gets two squeaks because it was the funniest. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Did I just break? uh, Oh, did I just break you? No, I'm fine. (laughs) I thought you were joking. All right. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. uh, Um,. I don't know where to go from this. <laughs> Should we just move on to the next? Wait. One? So, what are you going to do? With, what 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 are you going to make? So, you're, you're going to make the show about mocking general libertarian ideas. This I could definitely get well, down no. with. All right. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I, I want to keep it more of a lively thing. Um, <laughs> kind of like uh, the Freedom Fiends was before everything just went into hell in a handbasket. Um, right. Well, before before your ability to like make jokes on the Freedom Fiends was right. in was like dependent on like. Uh, moods and like moon cycles <laughs> <laughs> like like certain other things that uh, that affect mood the your mood. levels of communism as well that was also yeah i was a communist yeah. somehow i don't know it's like what um so yeah like the the idea initially when i was when i was signed on to that show uh, which freedom fiends was a nationally syndicated talk radio show on 32 radio stations now it's just uh, a way for him to push his rock band because he's not even on the radio anymore uh jeremy's not doing shows on it anymore which understandably no it's 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 done it's done forever oh like there's no more podcast period right it's it just just done it's a a former show i thought he was saying that he was just done talking about or done being on the radio i i didn't listen to it i just no there he released like one final episode and uh yeah it's just done now Mm. There's a lot Rip. of good episodes of the Freedom Fiends in the in the, in the past archives. Yeah, what? no, the ones with the ones with you and me and Jim Bab were great. Like yeah, that yeah. was some of the best times I've ever had making a show. Bill Buford but... and Ben Stone ones were also exceptionally great. Mm-hmm. The... Yeah, like some of them were good listening. Not gonna lie, the 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 Davi and Michael ones were also really good. I think my favorite one of all time was the one with um um. Uh, what's his name? Boston Tea Party, uh, Kenneth Royce, um, Bill Bupert, and and Michael Dean, where they were just all shitting on Molyneux. That one was that one was a beautiful show. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know. Everything just kind of fell apart after that. And he was like, all right, we're, we're, I know the, the show initially was we're pretending to do the sh- We're not going to do the tyranny all the time. Let's talk about how terrible the government is and all the evil things that they're doing and blah, blah, blah. It's just going to be like, hey, we're going to pretend like the government didn't or has already collapsed. And, you know, what would a radio show be like in that world? And that's kind of what the Lowbirds was. Also, let's talk. Let's talk crap on everyone, because if we're going to talk about how ostracization is a good thing and libertarianism start ostracizing people but now everybody's doing it so it's like well i don't think we need to go so hard in the paint i mean i do want to do do stuff if they do something generally awful but unless they do it's like really we're going to talk about how molyneux is a hypocrite again for the millionth time well yeah you like you can't have your business model be like uh they're always being like a constant supply of people who are like scumbags and who will who will be in your presence because eventually that's going to like lead you to like seek these people out and yeah no yeah Uh, so yeah but sometimes they seek me out (laughs) recently i guess but um yeah so definitely kind of want to move away from that so that's kind of the new methodology of just like hey let's have fun let's let's have this joke at stuff let's talk about how we have a meme president let's talk about how patreon is terrible um that seems more fun or let's talk about how like certain comedians are kind of swirling down the the shithole drain because they uh they're abusing prescription medications and (laughs) <laughs> burning bridges with of all people Artie Lang <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah when Artie Lang's like dude you're fucked up when Artie Lang tells you you're fucked up when Artie wow. Lang who's, who performed at a Denny's last night tells you you're fucked up <laughs> And his face yeah. just smashed in after a fucking cocaine bender. They, yeah, I really think they should, they should they should get rid of the dare program in all schools and just show the kids like time lapse photographs of Artie Lang's nose. <laughs> this is what happens, kids. Start with the uh, with the babe of the pig thing on Mad TV and just watch it, his slow decline over the last twenty years. I, like, oh, you're breaking black and blue sunset like on a flat canvas. Here, let's let's do that. We're gonna reconnect again. Try that one more time. Yeah, it, it looks like a black and blue like sunset, like on a flat canvas now, like as if somebody like put a postage stamp in the middle of its face. <laughs> but 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 such a man can't lower himself to go be friends with Joe Matarese again. Nope, <laughs> yeah, that, that's thinking too low. Yeah. Yep. And Owen Benjamin is uh, doing live streams on YouTube from his porch because uh, his wife won't let him do it in the house because <laughs> he's all into the conspiracy theories now and he's banning anybody who talks about the moon. Really? Yeah. If you believe in the moon landing, he'll block you. Really? Yeah. Oh, and, oh I have right. some fun. I have some and, fun. I have some fun I can have tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whenever he, he does an extreme oh he's like he's a, he, he's one of these people that streams for like six hours a day yeah so yeah it'll be really easy just get in there uh you know, you're you're not blocked for life <laughs> you're bad and uh yeah like i've never thought he was funny like crowder i can see an argument like if you think crowder's funny okay sure like i kind of get that like i re like owen's always been like just this lowest common denominator stepdad type of humor Uh like uh, like like yeah, well, like you're faggots, ha, 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 ha. like the, the, pussies. Yeah, the only thing that I ever found funny from him is when he played music. But you know, f- funny music. If you can, if you can play music, and put some funny lyrics to it, that's that, that's some talent. But it isn't necessarily. But it's crazy. very hacky, yeah. and he plays like the like his big song that it, it, you know that like that that Edward stole my bike, like the one that he like got thrown off of YouTube that's a for meme. or whatever. Right. First of all, it's a meme. Secondly, the music he played is is from out. Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's that's uh, the meme though. N word stole my bike. That's a, that's been a, that's been, that was a meme when I first get started hearing about memes for the first time, like on 4chan in 2007. Like this, that's that's an old meme, and it's based on the Mike Tyson Punch Out game. But it's like you know, like after you beat like the third guy. You, you start jogging through New York. 
Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um, that's, 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 that's sad. So yeah, it's old memes like that. And you're supposed to give this man super chats and like never talk about how you believe in the moon landing. (laughs) And yeah. And I, I, it looks like his, like the way he talks about his marriage is like similar to like when people are like just about to get divorced. Like talking about how yeah, I was having a conversation with my wife and she just said that there's a darkness about me recently. And uh yeah. And ever since so- the big change in his life was that he replaced pornography with conspiracy videos. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, dude, like how much porn are you watching? Yeah, I remember um I, I'm sure if he's talking about that shit all the time. I guarantee you Steven Crowder has axed him. But I remember watching an episode of Steven Crowder and he was like guest toasting or whatever. And he stole a uh, he stole a joke from, I believe, a movie or maybe it was Emo Phillips. But I remember it was like an obscure comedy film from like the 70s. That he stole a joke from and I was like, like the, the buildup was already there. And then he just like gave the punchline and it was like he was trying to pass it off as his own joke. Oh, uh, yeah. Because usually when I steal hmm. a joke from a movie or I steal a joke from somebody else, I'll be like, "Oh yeah, God, I love that movie." Or "Oh, it's a jerk. It's a great movie." Or I'll say something like that and give it a nod or something like that. But I, I, I try not to just be like, "Oh, yeah, I made that funny joke. I made that funny joke." Ha ha ha. <laughs> That's me. Like, hey, that was that. You stole that from the jerk. You you asshole. <laughs> Why are you ripping off? Why are we ripping off Steve Martin? What the fuck? Yeah, so I... How you go... How, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So let me do a preemptive reconnect. Just to make sure everything works. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Preemptive reconnect. There's... A, yeah. I, th- I think that folks don't really... Uh, like. I think people are a lot cooler with, like, joke thievery than they used to be. Because as long as you got somebody who, you know believes the same bullshit as you and uh, will base their lives around the same like like moron fringe politics that you believe in then you're cool with them like retelling you jokes from other people who maybe didn't believe those things but it's coming through the safe source of this comedian that I trust and who uh, you know says the world to me uh, perhaps in a grievance based worldview uh, spoken with an Australian accent on Netflix no big deal <laughs> Her her fans are the worst, uh, but th- like there's the unbearables, the Owen Benjamin fans that are very cult like, and like the left wing equivalent is definitely people who are really into Hannah Gadsby. Like they can't tolerate when someone says they don't like her. Like it, they immediately start diagnosing them with bigotry, and oh, I get, get, you're so privileged, and like you can't have an honest disagreement about whether a comedy special was good or not, like. And whether a comedian should quit halfway through their comedy special, et cetera. Well, I don't know. There's there's people calling out hackery quite a bit. I mean, I mean, the the oldest example is uh, Carlos Mencia. But w- what about uh, but, Amy but, Schumer? That was yeah. the thing. Everybody's like, there's video compilations of her stealing jokes. Like they'll take a joke from you know Paulus Poundstone in 1991. They'll play it and then they'll juxtapose it with her comedy routine. <laughs> The dude who made the Joe Matarese documentary, Porcelain, P-O-R-S-A-L-I-N, on YouTube also is making a documentary about Amy Schumer called This Little Piggy Went to Marketing. <laughs> and it's it's coming out after the Owen Benjamin documentary, allegedly. So, But the Owen one is going to be probably pretty dense. Like, it might be his longest movie yet. But all of his documentaries are great. I highly recommend all of them. Yeah. And he's got this British accent. So, yeah. <laughs> Joe Matteris, who is this failure destined comedian from New Jersey. <laughs> <sighs> so what what else has been going on? Uh so the government shut down. Um I don't know about you, but I I bought like three pounds of uninspected pork f- with Bitcoin. Could you imagine those poor NASA employees who like got shut down and then they're also banned from Owen Benjamin's YouTube channel? <laughs> You know, they're not getting a paycheck this week, and they can't they can't laugh at uh, ripped off jokes from nineteen seventies comedians and movies. Damn, I can't. I, I 
I, I can't I can't live in this world anymore. I have to let it go. I was really looking forward to having Baked Alaska read the screenplay to Airplane for me. Is but... Baked Alaska still a thing? I yeah, th- he's, he he's, he's, he's he's streaming on YouTube. Oh, jeez. <laughs> YouTube's now that a lot of people have like migrated off of YouTube, like they they've become a lot more like who who else did they say Mike Enoch I guess streams on there a lot now, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of folks that like you'd think would be banned from YouTube that stream on the regular on YouTube. Yeah, so um, there's people that I like that used to be banned from YouTube and now are back. Who oh who who might that be? Hmm. Revenge of the Sis. You ever watch them? No. Yeah. Revenge of the Sis. It's like cisgendered, C I S. Okay. Yeah, they're funny. They they, four to six every weekday they stream. Yeah, there's there's Raul 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 banned them from the house. (laughs) Yeah, I was wondering how the kill stream stayed on for so long on YouTube. They ended up having to they ended up getting banned. And the reason why they got banned, I don't know if I mentioned this. I think I did mention it when I was talking to MK. So yeah, the kill stream, they're kind of like a uh, I wouldn't say they're alt right, but they're definitely um they're definitely uh on that spectrum somewhere. But for the yeah. most part what they usually talk about, they don't really talk about politics so much, what they usually talk about is how like uh you know, YouTube drama, they're kind of like, you know, Keem Star and that sort of thing. Yeah. They're mostly making fun of skeptic like the skeptic community people and all the all the shit that they keep getting themselves into. Spurgs, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much like the the joke of the show is like, hey, let's let's laugh at these at retards. Um It's the boy that likes to laugh at everybody. Let's laugh at him. So they, they did this thing called the Hill Stream. Heel Stream. Uh and the idea is uh they were gonna donate all they on YouTube if you're monetized, you can set up a, a, a live stream and then have all of your super chats go to charity and then YouTube won't take a cut. Um so what they did is they said, hey, let's 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 do a, a fundraiser for St. Jude's Hospital and help, you know, poor sick kids and it'll be great and we'll raise a bunch of money. They raised oh, I think it was like fifty thousand dollars for St. Jude's Sick Kids Hospital. And it was it was a beautiful thing, and of course they had all of the people on there, and they were, just, but they were getting a little crazy. Um, a lot of them were drunk, and they started singing. Uh, I don't know if you've heard Moon Man by a little band called um, what is it, Goys and Rosenbergs. <laughs> I I'm unfamiliar. <laughs> Which is a very anti-Semitic racist song, <laughs> but it's in it's in it's in the tune of Spoon Man by um, Soundgarden. And you know they were doing some off the wall stuff, saying saying some racist stuff, and but that was kind of the joke was like, hey, this is it's funny because it's racist, and everything was fine. No one said anything for like months, for for months and months and months. And then the Wall Street Journal decided, hey, it's time to attack the new media because our our fucking dinosaur is falling apart. Um, <laughs> and so what they do is they they did an article about how these terrible office, awful racist KKK members uh, did a live stream where they were saying edgy jokes and and they raised money for sick kids hospital and we reached out to St Jude's Hospital to get their opinion and they were like they didn't know what to do because the media is just coming on the door saying hey why are you why are you supporting Nazis and they're like ah oh, we don't we'll retake we'll return the money whatever leave us alone um. So they ended up having to return for for publicity reasons, return fifty thousand dollars of of donated funds, and then YouTube just took the money and that was it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they banned them from the platform, and it was a whole shit show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's, it's just so YouTube. Oof, oof, hold on. Where? hold on, it, let's let's try this one more time. We're gonna disconnect and reconnect. Discord, I'm on to you. I'm on to you. Living up to the name. Yeah, go uh, ahead. <laughs> the like the weird thing is like with YouTube, they're the ones who like are trying to get you to become a Nazi harder than any other platform. <laughs> if you look up any conspiracy theory on YouTube, I love conspiracy theories. Like looking oh, yeah, up I've like seen this like too. whatever. And like, yeah, the first time you look up a conspiracy, the like your suggested videos are just like so, uh, how about those FBI crime and race statistics? Huh? Uh, hey, I uh, think six million Jews died in the Holocaust. What if I told you it was more like two hundred thousand? <laughs> and like on and on and on down the list. Like you, yeah, 
they, they're the like I I don't understand. And also, like they, also, they're the biggest perpetrators. Have you also noticed that if you like because every November around the you know around the around the twenty the the twenties twenty you know of the dates. Uh, I started getting back into JFK conspiracy theories because JFK is was assassinated. Uh, I think on the twenty second or the twenty third. I forget. Um, twenty third, I think. But yeah. yeah. Um, so I started getting sucked into like you know the debunking of the the JFK conspiracies, and even on the debunkings of the JFK conspiracy theories, you'll see like this little thing in the bottom corner that goes, "Hey, JFK was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald on the November twenty second of nineteen sixty three, and you, you should know this, and you should check out the Wikipedia article about it because." And it's like, wait, what are you, what, what are you doing here? I, they, I don't think they realize when you do that stuff, all you do is just make the, everybody's conspiracy boners get like eight times harder. Like, ah, oh, now YouTube is a part of the conspiracy. <laughs> and if you go and watch nine eleven videos, come on over to minds dot com where I have the truth. Yeah. Um, if if you look up nine eleven conspiracy theories, it says like, hey, nine eleven was a was a terrorist attack orchestrated by nineteen hijackers or and Bin Laden. It's like, do you do do you understand when you put that stuff in the bottom of the thing, people aren't going to go like, oh, maybe maybe this conspiracy theory is false. Immediately, their first thing is, well, this must be true if Google doesn't want me to 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 hear the other side, right? The FBI got to Google. Look at this. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're not helping. You're not helping. <laughs> not helping. No, like I can understand because I, I I remember there was a I don't know if he's still around, but there was a YouTuber named Fuel Productions, and he was a straight up Nazi, and he would do videos, and there would be a Nazi flag behind him, and he would talk about how fascism doesn't go far enough. You need national socialism because the Jew is terrible. Uh, you know, you got to have an ideology. You have to have you know race included in your ideology, and out out blatant. It's like that sort of thing. I get why they don't want that on their site, especially if you've ever been to Gab. I don't know if you've ever been to a little site called Gab. Oh, I've been to Gab and I I, I went to Gab like hearing about what Gab was very much in the abstract. Yeah. And then I went to Gab the actual website. <laughs> like I, I, I went to Gab with every intention of creating an account because I thought like whatever, like you can't really know anything about a social media network until such time as you like actually join and like start adding people like rely to your things, whatever. But no 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 the first visit i went to gab it was it, it was like i went to the daily stormer <laughs> in cantwell jared howe right um, these are the big accounts on gab yeah so it's like and those are what you see 99 percent of the time when you go on there unless it's all the people who got banned from every other place and it's like oh well like i could definitely see why you're banned yeah there's a lot of people on there that are okay and yeah robert bowers yeah, uh, but you can tell, like, because you'll you'll see someone like Tom Woods, and you'll be like, okay, I see why Tom Woods would be on there because he's trying to promote al alternative technologies, and because he he knows that the Twitter Confederacy, bands, you know, the Confederacy stuff. Uh, now that that's that's old shit. He, I don't think he, I know. I, don't think I know. I'm, I'm, I'm anyway, ball busting. I, I love how everybody like still picks on him for that. And he's like, dude, that was like 30 years ago. I don't believe any of that shit anymore. <laughs> like, leave me alone. <laughs> like, but anyways, yeah, like he'll he'll be on there and. Even like even good people will hop on there and be like, "Yeah, this is great." And I'll turn it to Twitter. We're gonna stick it to the man. And they're like, "Oh God, no!" And you'll see that even people like him drop off and go like, "Yeah, I I support it in in in, in theory, but in practice, holy shit, you guys, gotta, <laughs> something's got to happen here because <laughs> I don't want to hang around this place once every time." Yeah, yeah, I can't. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna do like, it again, oh, man. We're gonna, like we're gonna disconnect and reconnect one more time. We're going to get good audio out of this thing. God damn it. I'm not going to fucking have to resort to Hangouts again. I'm not doing it. So Ooh, no, you don't want to be doing that. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> yeah, you don't You don't really, like, nobody's going to go log in so that they can see stuff from people who really think Campbell's a genius. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like who made him the, like one of the number one voices on the website. By the way, I someone linked me this thing and, jeez. Oh, Oh, was it this thing from get from on Twitter from yeah, Gab that you, you were tagged in? That... I, I don't think I can. Yeah, I have to sign sign. Uh, am I signed in? Yeah, I don't have. I think I might be credentials in here. I might be able to find it. Hold on and give a dramatic reading for the crowd. 
Yeah, because that's that's a that was a beautiful thing. So yeah, Cantwell doesn't look like he's doing well well financially. The Radical Agenda platform, which by the way, let's 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 rewind the clock back a little bit. When he first started getting into this alt right shit, a lot of people were telling him, and we were saying on nationally syndicated talk radio even that hey, you know what, might not be a really good business fi- uh, business decision to uh, talk about how the Jews run everything and how black people are, t- are stupid and awful and we need to create a society just full of white people only um, and then expect then expect people to give you money for that t- kind of content. I don't think that's a viable business strategy. Um, you, you can have one or the other. You can have like, hey, I'm an independent creator and I'm creating independent media or you can have an actual job and then on your daytime go in and do that. You can't do both. You can't do both. And he thought we were stupid for even suggesting such a thing. So what did he say? He's. I'm going to read you two comments back to back. The first one. This is divorced of any context. So you're just going to have to take it for what it's yeah says. i can't i can't find this either but i appreciate the feedback but it's completely fucking impossible for me to keep going doing things for me to keep doing things exactly the way we've been doing them the radical agenda is failing as a business and something has to change there is no victory in failure 14 upvotes mm-hmm. then he responds to himself and says it's not a question of quote the jews accepting me it's a question of a of completely toxic branding that nobody wants to come anywhere near. Uh, three upvotes, and then when I saw the picture, I tried to press the picture and upvote it myself. Because <laughs> that is the exact scenario what, and that, that everybody tried to warn him about, and then here he is. Yeah. So, And he'll be the crying Nazi forever. There's nothing... Nothing he can really do and at this point. There's something very beautiful about that, that this man has been trying to achieve stardom for the All he wanted was time. to be famous. This has been since, like, 2011. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The the edgelordry, the, the, the screaming, the getting in everyone's face. Yeah. And, every, and anyone, uh, the, anyone ever reminded him, like, hey, you know, you're just some guy with, you know, some moniker of fame in a very small community. You're not that big. So he'll be like, well, how many followers do you have? You don't have any followers. I, 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 I'm bigger than you. I, I have more fans than you. And I'm soon I'm going to be in the mainstream. And it's like, OK. All right. And then he was. And then he was. But for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and then us libertarians had to start like. Trying to do some damage control and go like, yeah, most people who uh, who like this NAP thing, that's not me anyway. But most Jim Bab and I, yeah, most people who like this 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 NAP thing, um, they're, they they don't hate Jews. It's just this one off idiot. <laughs> yeah, uh, I remember maybe this is maybe three years ago. Jim Bab and I went to this conference in New York City, and it was in Brooklyn, and. There, Catwell was supposed to. I don't know if he was going to speak at this thing, or if they had just not booked him and people wanted to. But in protest, Catwell's fans were wearing these buttons with his like stupid little cartoon <laughs> face, <Family guy>. face. <laughs> yeah, 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 the Family Guy knockoff. Uh, again, like this, like you don't create anything of your own. You just like knock off people's stuff, and because they agree with you. It's supposed to be all good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember thinking like, God, like, uh, really? Like, this is the the hill you want to die on. Like, making sure this guy gets to speak and gets his like $75 speaking fee or whatever. Because he would always talk about getting invited to speak at these libertarian conferences. Like, it was a major source of income. Uh, Like, how much are these folks getting paid? Like, $50, like $25? You're like, that's media. Yeah. So uh, it looks like we're having a little bit of issues. We got most of that. <laughs> so that's good. I don't. I really need to find out what the fuck is happening because I spent the last like two hours, two hours, going to various chat rooms around Discord, talking to people, getting into different calls and stuff. And then here we are. And by the way, I'm getting some noise from you. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's gone. Uh, but yeah, like it's just weird. And then as soon as I go, like, hey, let's let's record a show. Cut out, cut out, cut out, cut out, cut out. I don't get it. I have no idea. I even turn off my other computer. 
turned off my Nintendo Switch, so I don't know what the fuck is happening. So, yeah. Is there anything else that we need to cover? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, when are you going to do another uh, Truth or Elvis? I don't know. Whenever someone books it. Oh, uh, probably I'll probably perform as Truth or Elvis at uh, Necrophilia Haiku Day. Not, is I there going to be video of it? Because I need to see. I for the love of God, I need to see. I need to hear Jolene. But but oh uh, yeah, we need to get that that, that would require rec- uh, getting Hannah Harkness. But yeah, steel beams, steel beams, steel beams, steel beams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to hear this. <laughs> the truth of Dolly Parton. <laughs> I keep telling people about it. It's like oh, just please tell me there's video or audio of it. Nope, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's an entertainer like a mandala it's there and then it's gone you know <laughs> so it's painted on the beach it's like entertainment snapchatting it's like as unless you saw time. in the, that 24 hours it's gone for yeah forever. my 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 musical about adam kokesh and na poe being in jail together entire feature length two acts it was there and now it's gone yeah yeah should have got it it's the way yeah that's the way it should be like that's that, that's entertainment yep <laughs> You got to you got any hot sports picks for for our, for a handful of people? Uh yeah, lay the points with gambling? the Saints. Yep, lay the lay the points with the Saints. Uh the Saints I the, like that line should come down to about 7 or so by game time. Uh yeah, definitely take the Saints. I think they're going to win by probably two touchdowns or more. The, the Eagles are about to run out and uh I I just personally need this to happen because there's nothing worse than living in the metro metro Philadelphia area with like happy Philadelphia sports fans. They're absolutely unbearable. They shout indoors. They talk all loud in that like awful Philadelphia accent. And uh, yeah, like it's much better when all the teams suck and like there's just this quiet depression going around. So (laughs) Yeah. Uh, what about hockey? Because I, I I have not been following hockey this year, and from what I'm told, the Knights have been not doing too hot. I did catch one game at a at a at a sports bar while drinking some while drinking some Ardbeg Ten, which was fucking. Yeah, amazing. you're gonna have to wait for WNBA season. The okay. Aces should be really good this year. Okay. Uh, they they have the number one pick in the draft. It's a stacked draft class, so like they'll they'll get somebody who's pretty WNBA ready. And unlike the NBA, where you go to college for one year and then you're gone, nobody's gonna like pass up getting a degree for WNBA money because they make like forty grand to do to, like do a season in the WNBA. So most of them stay for like three four years. So they develop a lot more as players. So the rookies in the WNBA tend to be like closer to the pro level than in a lot of these other pro sports. So it's a really good draft class. They'll wind up possibly with Katie Lou Samuelson of UConn or Ian Eskew of Oregon. And they'll get someone really good to pair with Asia, Asia Wilson, who's their big star. So I really, really like the Las Vegas Aces. Uh, both in individual home spots because they, they have a really good home field advantage, home court. And then uh, po- like I like any props you could find on them going to the playoffs as well because they didn't go to the playoffs last year. They narrowly missed out. They uh, they probably will next year. We'll see. We'll see what they wind up doing in free agency. But yeah, I love the WNBA. I'm like me and seven lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Vegas, we're, we're pretty big about the, the aces. Like I'll go. Uh, uh, whenever they start playing the, uh, the, um, this is the Statue of Liberty at the New York, New York hotel usually is sporting one of their jerseys. It's either the Golden Knights or the Aces never fails. Yeah. We get the Raiders. Oh God. Don't remind me. I, I one re- more for I, the old, uh, I really, 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 really don't want the Raiders here, but we're getting them. And that's going to suck. They're already building the stadium. It, lo- it looks like it's going to be gorgeous, but it's, it's a fucking Raiders. We're going to get Raider Nation here. That's the bad part about Raiders. Right. It'd be like if they it would be like if Bruce Springsteen announced he was doing a permanent residence in your uh, in Vegas or, or the Vandals back in the day before they started playing it a little bit safe. Like the Vandals get it. The Vandals used to have like the worst worst crowd of all the punk rock bands. Circus Circus is getting overtaken by the insane clown posse. <laughs> I'm telling you, one of these days I'm gonna run for mayor and I'm gonna make Circus Circus great again. Mark my fucking words, we're gonna make Circus Circus <laughs> into a brothel. 
<laughs> We're gonna yeah, I mean, it's already like forty nine dollars a room. Yeah, you're already getting fucked. You might as well uh, do some fucking while you're at it, right? <laughs> Ever right? Make it a, thing on. Make it a mutual thing. Yeah, hey, you're on. <laughs> Someday, soon, soon. I actually was going to run for president this this time around for the LP, um, but now that Kokesh is pretty much out of the running for in the eyes of most people, it's like, well, what's the point of running now? Ross Ulbrick should run. Ross Ulbrick from jail? Yeah. <laughs> Someone contact I'd, Lynn. I'd, I'd, yeah, no, I'd vote for him over any of these other schmucks and then like make a deal with Trump, like. You commute his sentence and then like you don't run in any of the swing states and that's fine and that's like what you would do if you actually had any sort of like influence or power or like knew how to run shit. But instead it's going to be like, oh no, like everybody get pumped for Bill Weld. <laughs> Ross Ulbrich running for president might be a good thing or even Lynn. I don't know if the law says that you can't run from prison or run for office from jail. But if no, you, you definitely can. There was a Supreme Court case about it like 100 years ago when Eugene Debs did it. Oh, please make this happen. Get him elected and then he can just pardon himself. <laughs> no, he can't. That, that, that's in the Constitution. You can't. Oh, you he'd, can't he'd have to, he'd, he, no, he'd have to be president from jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'd be president from jail and then he could pardon him. Oh. No, but he what would, he can he do, what he can do is have his mom run. Yeah, and then she could pardon him, or she she could be vice. She could make him vice president because now they're in different states. <laughs> she can make right. him vice president, and then bam, there you go. Yep, there you Sounds go. Sounds good. I think that's 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 a much more well thought out plan than I will abolish the entire federal government via executive <laughs> order. Because that's that's not how mafia works. Sorry, Adam. That's not how mafia works. <laughs> people run around believing this and like when, when you talk about how it's an idiotic idea they shrug like eh, well like you know he danced at the Washington he danced at the Jefferson Memorial like motherfucker what <laughs> <laughs> but now now people are saying hey I danced with Je uh, with Adam Kokesh at the Jefferson Memorial and I, I regret ever having given this guy a fucking platform this guy is an awful terrible he horrible human being so good on them. Good on everybody. Yeah, good for them. Yeah, good for them. The tides have definitely changed. I don't know how yep. instrumental we were in doing it, but I'm sure we have. But we're no longer necessary. So now we have to mock you for other things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, oh, also one more thing. One more thing for the uh, hundreds. I don't know what episode this one is, and I'm too lazy to check. Um, <laughs> but definitely uh, for the for the last episode. We're going to be doing a um, a very special uh, radio drama that should be interesting, and I might as well say like what the topic is going to be because it's usually a solo episode, uh, but it's going to be a solo episode, and then the the other half is going to be a uh, radio drama, um, a very a very good radio drama, but the uh, the topic is going to be like the Federal Reserve conspiracy theories and why they're all wrong, so that should be an interesting one. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Federal Reserve is an awful, terrible thing, but all the conspiracies, the creature from Jekyll Island stuff, that's c complete horseshit. Uh, we're, I don't know. I'll, I'll, it's going to be a long one. It's going to be a really long one. And I have lots of notes that I've been doing over the last year, <laughs> making sure, double checking everything and making sure everything is uh, up to par. But that should be a good one. All right. You got, you, do you have any shows you want to plug? I think you get any, any upcoming monumental ways. Her, hold, hold, on, uh, laugh hold, on, cast. hold on, hold on, one last time. All right, go ahead, go ahead. I know, but uh, monumental waste of time podcast. Uh, it is the podcast about Joe Matarese that I host, available <laughs> at laughcast.com. That's l a f f c a s t dot com. It's me and Karen from Philly, and then, uh, yeah, that's the. That, that that's pretty much what I'm up to. What what I've been up to. That and being a suburban gay Republican dad with uh, no kids or ballots. <laughs> <laughs> Got a mean pair of New Balances though, and that's that's the important element. <laughs> oh, new, isn't that those are the Nazi shoes? Yep. Uh, oh. Well, I, I guess, oh. but you know. Oh, oh uh, ee, ooh, ee, ooh. Ooh. 
Yeah, uh, I'm a Republican. It's soft Nazism, you know how it goes. <laughs> All right, man. We're, we're not we're, we're not rounding up the gays and taking them to camps. We're rounding up the gays and we're taking them to our bed in Walmart. Everybody needs to relax. Yeah. By the way, did you hear we're bringing worm? We're taking worms back. It's ours. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, you take it. You take it right out of the grave. Yeah. But- <laughs> uh, they take it over the over the body. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, thanks for coming on, Steve. Worms. Yeah. No problem. Good talking to you. Yep. Worms. <laughs> worms. <laughs>